If you watched the Super Mario Maker 2 Invitational, a certain level might have stood out to you. This Ghost House course required a minimum of two players to complete it. However, we still don't know if a level like this could be uploaded, considering we don't know if we can clear check a level with more than one person. However, that won't stop us from working our way around it, and I'm going to show you how. If Mario Maker 2 follows suit with its predecessor, then we will be forced to confirm that a level is beatable by only one person before uploading it. Now this won't stop us from uploading levels that require more than one person, we'll just have to work around it. In this video, I'm going to show you four basic designs for a player counter mechanism that can be used to open a certain path depending on how many players are actually playing. Also, huge shout out to Redditor W for doing most of the legwork on this design already. The first design will work in any of the original four game styles and opens one of four pathways, corresponding to the number of players. When the room loads, this shellmit starts bouncing against this question mark block, destroying the POW block that is directly above it until the question mark block runs out of items. Assuming a question mark block will release a number of items equal to the number of players, this also means the number of POW blocks destroyed will equal the number of players. This, essentially, allows us to determine exactly how many players there are and force them into a certain warp pipe. Each warp pipe leads to a different section, making the level different depending on how many players there are. This whole contraption fits in a 5x8 tile space, uses a total of 4 warp pipes, and 7 entities. The spring on top is to prevent the POW blocks from being ground pounded on in New Super Mario Bros. U, so if you're using any of the other three game styles we could shift this whole design down one tile and save some space. Here is a variation that will work in all game styles, including 3D World. We still haven't seen if shellmits are going to be in 3D World, so this design takes advantage of a red Koopa instead of a shellmit. When this contraption is loaded, the winged question mark block will destroy this bomb, which scares the red Koopa into its shell, which then begins bouncing against this question mark block just like the previous design. That's really the only difference. But this variation is one tile taller at 5x9 and uses 9 entities, two more than the previous design. Same amount of warp pipes, however. Four. Which if Mario Maker 2 keeps the same limitations on the amount of warp pipes you can add in a level, this only leaves us six more warp pipes to use throughout the entire stage. So, if you only want to check if your level is being played in single player versus multiplayer, and don't need four separate paths for each amount of players, this next contraption would be what you want to go with. Again, when the room loads, this shellmit will bounce against this question mark block. If there is only one player, only one POW block will be destroyed, and this door will become accessible. Any more than one player and all of the POW blocks will be destroyed, preventing players from entering the door at all. This is a much more compact system coming in at 3x6 tiles and only 5 entities. But the biggest difference is that it only uses one set of doors, leaving you with plenty of warp pipes and doors to go around. This variation will work in 3D World, and this one can be used to save space when the level is not in the new Super Mario Bros. U style. We still don't know how Nintendo will handle uploading levels in Mario Maker 2, however it's best we think about it now so we're prepared. If you'd like more Mario Maker level design guides, I've got some videos to the left here. And if you're not already subscribed, I post a new video every week, so you're missing out. As always, thanks for watching.